Let's bring those questions. The President National Security Advisor, Susan Rice, thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, let's begin with how Bo Bergdahl is doing right now. We know he's landed in Germany. What more can you tell us about how he's doing his health? Well, George, first of all, this is a joyous day. The fact that uh, he is now safely in American hands and will be reunited with his family and his community is incredible. He's now in Landstuhl uh, Hospital in uh, Germany. He's going through all of the uh, requisite evaluations and, and care. Uh, and uh, he is uh, said to be walking uh, and in good physical condition. Uh, and we look forward to uh, the days to come in which we'll have an even better sense of, uh, of how he's doing. And uh, we look forward to when he can return to the United States, continue his rehabilitation and be reunited with his family. Have we been able to learn anything yet about his years in captivity? It's too soon, uh, George. You know, th there's a very um, refined and precise protocol for how we treat and support uh, prisoners of war who've just been released. He's going through this process uh, of being supported and cared for uh, and evaluated, but it's way too soon to get into the details of, of what transpired during his captivity. Is it captivity. true, though, that he's having trouble speaking English? George, uh, I think his, uh, his father mentioned that uh, yesterday, but I think we ought to wait. Uh, it's really been barely 24 hours uh, since he's been back uh, in American hands. We need to see uh, uh, how he does in, in, as he goes through this evaluation. But our primary interest uh, is in his health and well-being and his full recovery and the opportunity for him to be reunited with his parents, whom I had the privilege to meet yesterday. They're overjoyed as any of us would be as parents, and all of us are as Americans, because finally, after almost five years, he'll be home. And this has been an almost five-year effort to bring him home. The U.S. has gotten close before. What made the difference this time? Well, George, things have come together. I mean, th this has been something that the, the United States, we've been committed to getting him back as we're committed to bringing every American uh, taken on the battlefield back, and we never leave them behind. But this has been a process that has extended off and on over a period of, of almost three years. Uh, toward the end of last year, we had some indications that it might be possible uh, to, uh, to return Bo Bergdahl. Uh, those discussions uh, mediated by the government of Qatar uh, really uh, came to f fruition over the course of the last week. Uh, but it really wasn't until yesterday morning, just before uh, 10.30 Eastern time, that we knew for sure that he was back safely in American hands. As you've seen, the criticism already coming in. Martha Raddatz mentioned some of it from Mike Rogers, the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee. We also have the top Republicans on the Armed Services Committee saying this is going to put Americans at risk, uh, threaten American lives because you broke the policy of trading uh, with terrorists. What's your reaction to that? Well, George, this is, uh, this is a very special situation. Uh, Sergeant Bergdahl wasn't a, simply a hostage. He was an American prisoner of war captured on the battlefield. We have a sacred obligation that we have upheld since the founding of our republic to do our utmost to bring back our men and women uh, who were taken in battle. Uh, and we did that in this instance. If for some reason uh, we took a position now in the 21st century when some of our adversaries may not be traditional state actors, that we would not do our utmost to, to bring our prisoners of war home, uh, that would break faith with the American people and with the men and women who serve in uniform. So regardless of who may be holding an American prisoner of war, we must do our best to bring him or her back. Also questions about whether the president violated the law. That charge has come from Congress as well, that he was supposed to notify members of Congress before the transfer of any Gitmo detainees. Well, George, in, in fact, what we had to do and what we did do, uh, consistent with the president's constitutional authority as commander in chief, is prioritize the health of Sergeant Bergdahl. We had reason to be concerned that, uh, that this was an urgent and acute situation, that his life could have been at risk. We did not have 30 days to wait. And had we waited and lost him, uh, I don't think anybody would have forgiven uh, the United States government. We have, uh, in the past, had extensive consultations with Congress. They were well aware that they this idea and this prospect uh, was one that the administration was seriously considering. But when it came to fruition, uh, the Department of Defense, in consultation with the Department of Justice, determined that it was uh, both appropriate and necessary uh, for us to proceed in an expedited fashion. And, and that's what the president decided to do. And as a consequence, we have Bo Bergdahl back. These detainees being sent back to Qatar, they are fairly high level Taliban. 
uh, detainees. We know that they're going to be have to stay in Qatar for at least a year. Uh, the question, though, is the law requires assurances that they're not going to be able to return to the battlefield. Senator Sexby Champ is saying those assurances so far are feeble. What assurances do you have? Well, the law says that we need to have uh, sufficient uh, confidence that the risk can be can be substantially mitigated, and we do have those. Uh, we do have that confidence based on a detailed understanding with the government of Qatar, based on President Obama's personal communication with the Emir of Qatar on Tuesday when it looked like this possibility uh, might be uh, imminent, and those assurances uh, relating to the movement, the activities, the monitoring of those uh, detainees give us confidence that they cannot and in all likelihood will not pose uh, a significant risk to the United States and that it is in our national interest that this uh, this transfer have been but, made. But what are those assurances and what happens after a year? In the past, we have seen high-level Taliban's who've been released go back to the battlefield. Well, George, I can't get into the specifics of, of the understandings, but they relate to restrictions on travel, movement, uh, and uh, the uh, activities of, of the individuals uh, who will be in, in Qatari care. Um, but those assurances, I can tell you, are such that, that we are confident that, uh, that the risk has been substantially mitigated and that uh, this is, in fact, uh, consistent with the national security interests of the United States. Is this an opening for broader peace talks? That remains to be seen. I mean, obviously, this uh, engagement indirectly through the Qataris uh, with the Taliban was for the specific purpose of releasing Bo Bergdahl. Uh, but we have long said and long hoped that there could be uh, Afghan-led reconciliation between the government of Afghanistan and its opponents, including the Taliban. So if this, uh, if this exchange uh, opens that door a little bit, then we would welcome it, uh, and uh, we would certainly hope that in any event uh, that the reconciliation, which we have all long said is essential, can, uh, can proceed. Finally, on this point, uh, Sar Sergeant Bergwald, there are a lot of questions about how he originally was captured and whether or not he had deserted, had left uh, his post. Is that going to be investigated? And if it's found that he did indeed uh, leave his post, will he be disciplined or has already paid the price? <laughs> Certainly, uh, anybody who's been held in those conditions in captivity for five years has paid an extraordinary price. But that, that is really uh, not the point. The point is that he's back. He's going to be safely reunited with his family. He served the United States with honor and distinction. And we'll have the opportunity eventually to, to learn what has transpired in, in the past years. But what's most important now is his health and well-being, that he have the opportunity uh, to recover in peace and security and be uh, reunited with his family, uh, which uh, is why this is such a joyous day. Finally, we're about to hear from Senator Ted Cruz, and the president, of course, laid out his foreign policy vision this week at West Point. Uh, Senator Cruz has criticized the administration, saying that it's been far too willing to abandon and alienate our allies and far too willing to appease and demonstrate weakness to those who would do us harm. Your response? George, the United States is the leading power on the world stage. Uh, we are recognized by everybody as such. Our military has no peer. Our economy is the strongest. Uh, we have extraordinary human and natural resources. We're reaching energy independence. We have the greatest network of alliances and friendships of, of any country around the world. And we are leading uh, in a fashion uh, that is redounding to the national security benefit of the United States. Uh, it's only the United States that can rally partners uh, and, and allies to pressure a country, for example, like Iran, and bring it to the negotiating table so that we have at least the potential for a comprehensive nuclear deal that would take uh, forever nuclear weapons uh, off the table in Iran. The United States, working with our European partners, has rallied uh, to isolate and pressure Russia for its uh, activities in Ukraine. That's the kind of leadership that only the world's greatest power can bring to bear. Uh, I can't uh, speak for Ted Cruz and, and what uh, his particular perspective might be, but I can tell you uh, when we go to Europe next week, as we will again for the second time this year, and when we went to Asia uh, back in uh, April, that all of our allies and partners look to us as their in indispensable leader uh, and want to work and coordinate with us closely because they know their security, our shared values, and our future depend on it. Ambassador Rice, thanks very much for your time this morning.